podcast i am back and the reason why i'm doing another video is because i cannot believe how much you guys all loved it so i thought what am i going to make today everybody's asking me what are you making next so since i made a big pot of sauce yesterday i have my leftover sauce and i have a large quantity of leftover meatballs i'm going to show you my homemade lasagna made with homemade pasta now I have about four maybe even five different ways I make lasagna and traditionally um, I make it with homemade pasta um, but I'm not going to do that method today the the rolling out and the typical homemade pasta method um, I am using my manicotti shells and this is something I thought about uh, maybe a couple years ago and I thought why not can why can't I use my manicotti shells they are essentially homemade egg noodles um, made in a crepe form so I did some research and I found that yes there actually is a recipe for this and it is done in northern Italy and it is called timbalo so I'm going to show you how I do that and it's gonna to come together so, so fast, you guys are gonna be like blown away. So, here it is. Um, one cup of all-purpose flour, one third cup of semolina flour. I'm going to just sprinkle a little bit of salt in there. Here we have four eggs. We're gonna whisk that. So easy, guys. You guys are gonna be said blown away four eggs um, a little drizzle of there, just a bit okay we're gonna whisk that up you can even use a fork for this but this comes in handy when I add the rest of the ingredients whisk it up Drop in your flour. Cup and a half of water. Super easy, right? So we're looking for the consistency of a very loose pancake batter. Very loose. It's important that it's loose. Um, it's too thick you're gonna have pancakes and you don't want that you want a very thin like crepe this isn't your traditional crepe recipe because there's a lot more eggs in it and of course we're not putting sugar or anything like that in there this is essentially a watered-down pasta dough that's all it is cooked on the stove so you don't need a fancy pasta maker don't need a lot of elbow grease so now I'm just going to oh this stupid whisk I bought this at Walmart and it is a piece of crap I think I like my dollar store one better okay you guys see that very liquidy that's perfect if you get busy and you let this sit um, and it tends to um, get a little thick on you, just add a little bit of water. No big deal. As long as you have that consistency, you don't even have to like beat this like crazy as long as it's incorporated. That's all. A handy dandy Norwex towel here. Okay, I'm going to put this together for you. So I went ahead and really tried to be organized and prepare everything ahead of time for the sake of the video. But let me tell you, that is the best way you can um, make a recipe is just get all your ingredients out, measured. Um, I know it makes a lot of dishes because everything's in separate little bowls, but it's so much easier to follow a recipe this way. And I'm learning that and, you know, I've been cooking a long time. So, I'm going to put this aside because I probably will make more. They freeze 
very easily, very nicely, I should say. So I'm gonna make more later and freeze them. So this is my shells. You can see like crepes. Timbalo is so easy to make. Of course, I don't call it timbalo because I did not grow up making this recipe. Um, I just call it homemade lasagna. The heck, that's what it is. So to put this recipe together, I am going to go ahead and grease my pan a little bit. Just so it doesn't stick. So recap on the shells, you are making crepes. You want the batter really, really thin. You want a scoop, um, not even a full scoop, maybe three quarter of the scoop. You want it runny. I would do about that much. You want it in a hot oiled pan. So what I do is I drop a, a half a teaspoon of oil on my frying pan. I like to use a really high quality nonstick frying pan this size. A little drop of oil, again with the paper towel like I did my, my pan. You're gonna grease it like that and you're gonna do that every three or four shells. Does not need a lot of oil. Every three or four shells you're gonna do that. And then you're going to, this is not hot, it's cool. You're gonna drop and you're going to swirl. Okay, if it's not swirling good enough, it's too thick. You can help with the little ladle here. Okay, but you wanna cover the bottom and voila, that's what you have. It takes on medium high heat, literally seconds. Flip it, you can even do it with your hand, that's how easy it flips. Seconds on each side, maybe about 10 seconds, 20 seconds max, and then layer away, that's it. That way. Okay, so we're going to start with our timbalo. So here we have one egg, scrambled a bit. Let's get this out of here. I have my leftover pasta sauce, my leftover meatballs, which typically I would fry up some meat with onions and garlic, season it, let it cool throw in some cheese, and that's my mixture for my lasagna. But when I have meatballs, they're so good crumbled up in a lasagna, you won't do it any other way. A little bit of Parmesan cheese, I like Gran, Gran Padano, is my favorite. And mozzarella, now typically I would use a high quality fresh mozzarella or um, you know the ones that come in the ball and I would chop that up and they they kind of it melts so that you can just do it with your fingers and pieces I didn't have that today and I did not want to go to the store so I just used my favorite mozzarella that I use for my pizza and it's um, actually a no-name mozzarella that melts really really beautifully and I just left it out so that it softens so that I can crumble it into my lasagna. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and layer. This is so forgiving, guys. I don't know exactly how many I'm going to need for each layer, but that recipe that I showed you yields 12 to 14. figure it about four per layer. You can cut them. I'm looking for a smaller one. Here we go. So this is how I have it. The sides are a little raised. Okay, now with the egg wash, what you want to do is 
in between the sheets of pasta. I don't know if you can see that, but in between the sheets of pasta, I've just kind of added some egg mixture that helps it seal it together so that it's seamless. See, like that. That's it. Now the difference between this lasagna and my traditional lasagna is that you do not need a lot of sauce. You really, really don't, which is so easy. So I'm just taking a little bit of my sauce and just gonna drizzle it lightly. And we're gonna layer away so, lightly. You do not need a lot of sauce. Don't ask me why. It doesn't, maybe it makes it too messy, I don't know. But it cooks perfectly like this. So I'm just squishing my meatballs. This is such a good idea, because you know what guys, my meatballs, they're so flavorful. They have cheese, they have breadcrumbs, they have parsley, they have basil, all the yummy seasoning and a yummy base for your lasagna. So you don't want to overpower that base. You don't want it to be too soggy. So just a little bit. It gets messy, I know. This is where it's handy to have your sink close by. of the mozzarella. Now, somebody asked me what I'm making today. This was not in the plan, but I thought, what the heck, I have the sauce and we're not going to eat pasta again. So I don't think I'm making this tonight. I think I'm gonna throw it in the freezer. And it freezes super, super, super great. That's it. I'm going to do a couple layers like that. I find the bottom layer needs the most amount of crepes because you want that sturdy. Um, I can cheat and get away with three crepes on this layer because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break it. Remember we're sealing it back up with the egg so it it's like a puzzle. You don't have to have perfection. You will not see that in the layers. It will cook up like one big sheet of pasta. It's amazing. This recipe is my favorite. I have served this for dinner when I've had a dinner party and it goes over really, really well. And people think I've slaved over this homemade pasta and I didn't. Here we go again, getting messy, which is okay. We're having fun squishing our meatballs. generous with the cheese. I absolutely love cheese with Parmesan and mozzarella. You can grate your cheese, but like I said, I usually use the ball of mozzarella, so it's easier to just chop it up and it just falls apart in your hand. 
have used this too. It works. It's good. And if I don't have to go to the grocery store right now, I will not. I'm so glad that you guys enjoyed these videos because you guys are home. You're stuck at home. What better time to try it? And if it doesn't turn out, so what? I've had a lot of ep epic fails in the kitchen. I really don't care. Don't make it again, make it again, do it better. There's no, there's no right or wrong in the kitchen. Your husband or wife, whoever you're making this for, will say it's delicious anyway. If they know what's good for them. Okay, here we go. Just want to show you guys. This is what it looks like. I'm not overpowering it with sauce. Just a nice little drizzle. And we're going to do another layer. I'm hoping to get four layers. Eh, I don't think I will. I'm going to get three and a half. No biggie. I have more pasta to make. This does puff up. These shells puff up in the oven. You don't need it super high. Ooh, I thought that was a hair. It's not. That would be bad. No, it's a crease in the shell. I usually tie up my hair a little bit more, but I hated the way it looked yesterday, so I felt like doing my hair. Another thing you want to do is kind of in between layers. Sometimes you just need a little poke. This is going to let the sauce come through the layers. Typically, I would like four layers. I kind of cut myself short because I'm Nancy and I don't follow recipes. I made the recipe for the sake of the video. I just winged it before and I made my shells so that I can have them ready for you. Essentially, it is the recipe. Don't think that I'm not giving you the right recipe. I totally am. It's just that I really, I know how to eyeball everything. You should be able with this recipe I gave you you should. There should be no reason why you don't get a good four layers, maybe even five. But you don't need it really high as long as your pan come um as high as high as your pan is, you don't want to go right to the top because this will puff up. It puffs up really high. So you don't want to overflow and have a mess in your kitchen. I also threw in a little bit of meat in my sauce, so that's why you see some chunks in there. That is another video, guys. Pasta and meatballs, sauce and meatballs. So, I think I'm gonna leave that one because I do want another layer on this. But I'm gonna just show you. So if I was finishing this lasagna for to put in the oven, I would put a generous amount of sauce on the top. Um, I'd finish it with another layer. I would not leave it like this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make some more shells and I'll do a part two to the video and I'll show you exactly how I will finish this lasagna and uh, how I will get it ready to put in the freezer. Okay.